Dave Hildick Smith, a cardiologist in Brighton in the UK. Uh, we're talking today about the EBC main study uh, behind the scenes. And um, when I was thinking about this, I remembered that back in 2002 or 2003, it must have been, we were in America, a friend of mine, Peter Glennon and I, and we were sitting at the bar because the whole day had been canceled, I can't remember why. And in that, in that few hours at the bar, we designed both the BBC One trial and fundamentally the EBC main trial tagged onto it. So the history of this study goes back so many years um, when you actually track it back to its origins. And I was, I was just reflecting on that when, when thinking about uh, having this conversation. I think for me, the, the, the most interesting finding of EBC Maine was because we found there was fundamentally no difference between the two groups, that it's not necessary to prejudge the issue and decide upfront that you need two stents. You can take it step by step. And in fact, interestingly, of course, in the provisional group, only one fifth of the patients actually needed that second stent. So to say at the outset, oh, we need two stents, that's usually wrong. You quite possibly don't. So for me, that's really the, the most important finding at BBC Maine. The next thing I think we'll be doing is looking at all the QCA analysis, which was very detailed and done by the core lab at CERC. And I think there's a wealth of data in there that can be analyzed and assessed with regard particularly to where did restenosis occur and when um, related to the two techniques. So that will definitely be looked at. We'll probably also do uh, a publication on imaging and outcomes with the two techniques. There's plenty of information still to come. Of course, when you finish a study, suddenly everyone has lots of ideas about a new study uh, and forgets the enormous amount of work that's gone on behind the scenes to, to make this study work. So, I mean, it's been an incredible amount of effort from CERC um, the, the ability to get the data from all the various sites, 31 sites right across Europe, um, when it's been impossible to visit uh, and monitoring has had to be remote, it's been really difficult and, and they've done a fantastic job. Um, I think the next thing for the EBC is going to be deciding what our, our next study is. Is it a randomized study? Is it perhaps a more descriptive study? There are so many different ways that people approach the left main, perhaps a, a, a huge registry uh, housed at CERC with uh, the information being put online by all the operators, a bit like they do for the Euro CTO club. I mean, there are many, many possibilities, perhaps involving drug eluting balloons at the side branch now for the left main, that should be possible as the drug eluting systems are getting better and better. Um, so I think there are a huge number of possibilities of exactly what direction we go in next. I suppose one of the things I'm, I'm quite proud of in a way is that the way the whole EBC has come together and produced now two important uh, randomized studies. It's been a slightly unconventional journey in some respects. The EBC has brought together clinical experts, uh, engineering experts, uh, people from imaging, people from different areas of the science of bifurcations, all interested in the manner of blood flow around the bifurcation and how best to optimize it. And I think there's been a really good template, if you like, for getting people together from disparate walks of life who all have the same aim. And so I'm, I'm delighted that we've managed now to cr create these two important studies. And I'm hoping that we will go on to produce more important studies in the future. Um, so thank you very much for listening to this brief outline of uh, EBC main behind the scenes.